Hello and welcome to another tune setup of course in GT7 and this video so that you know what you're getting into is going to be a bit of a hybrid between a special project style build a straight up circuit build to use on multiple circuits but in particular this is the car that I love to use to earn the most cash over and over again and I'm going to show you the event that you can do that in many of you will already know that is of course at Le Mans but for those who are maybe not familiar I'll just give you a quick rundown of that in a second now first of all as far as the visuals on this one I have fitted the wide body kit which of course is within the GT Auto section then you can have the option of course if you don't want to have a livery on it then just do whatever you want visually of course, the visuals do change the performance points, so you'll need to keep an eye on that to keep under 700. But if you want to go for what I've done, all you need to do is go to the search section and go into the, you know, like livery finder section of the game. And this livery is actually not mine. It was created by this player. I'll put their name on the screen. Or if you just search up the hashtag DeWalt, you'll find this particular build. And that is, of course, the livery and all of the body parts as well. I went for his because I just liked what he did with the car. And it's, of course, a replica of the real-life TVR T400 race car. It already does exactly what I want visually. So that's pretty much all I need to run through there. If, though, you don't want to do that, then fit the front bumper, the diffuser on the back, the side skirts, the rear wing, you know, all that kind of good stuff. Then, as far as the mechanical side of the tuning, which, of course, you don't need to download from anyone else, come over into the tuning shop. Then what you want to buy, we'll go from extreme and work our way down. I've gone for the carbon ceramic brakes. You don't necessarily need to do that, though. You can go for the racing brakes under the next section if you want to. Those are a little bit cheaper. So go for whichever one you want. You do want your racing heavy wet tyres, so make sure you buy those. As far as the racing parts, we've got the stroked out engine, the balanced tuning, uh, polished ports, racing filter, racing exhaust, as you could see just now, the racing pads, of course. These are the other brakes that I referenced being cheaper than the carbon ones, if you want to go for those. The exhaust manifold, the fully customizable suspension, of course, the clutch and flywheel, the racing hard tires. I'll, we'll get into why in a second, why you need both. And then the fully customizable gearbox, aka transmission. Then for the semi-racing stuff, do you want the limited slip diff? the fully customizable one in particular. We do not have the stage three weight loss, interestingly, as you can see. For club sport, uh, there is, I mean, you don't necessarily have to do this. I've got ballast and the power restrictor anyway. I would always recommend having the power restrictor because it allows you to adjust the car for events more specifically, have more control if you need to change it at any given time. I would also recommend having the ballast, to be honest, because it doesn't actually make the car heavier unless you want it to. So again, that can help you to work around certain events if you want to use the same car for different levels. Then finally, for the sports one, we have the stage one weight reduction. Now, as you can see from the weight over there, 1100 kilos, that looks pretty similar to stock. So we'll get to why in just a second. This one already has, of course, sports hard tires, so you don't need to buy those. And that is it as far as the mechanical parts. Now, to jump over into the garage to show you what I've actually done to set up the car, I wanted this to feel not so much like a straight line missile. And you can see from the oil condition that I've done a few miles in this already. But I didn't want it to just be a straight line monster, I wanted it to feel like a well-balanced, kind of realistic approach to a race car. So 444 horsepower, the torque is pretty good as well, 1100 kilos is nice and low, and of course coming in at literally just under 700 points. Now you want to fit the racing hard tyres first, the wet tyres do rejoice, rejoice, reduce even the points by a lot, but again, we'll get to that in a second, that's more to do with the race than actually needing them in general. As far as the suspension, though, we've got 95 on the ride height. I've left the anti-roll on 4. For the compression on the dampers, we've got 38. We've dropped the expansion a little bit to 42. Frequency is on 2.3 and 2.5. For the camber, 1 degree on the front, 1.5 degrees on the back. No toe angle on the rear, 0.10. That's, of course, towed out on the front. As far as the diff, we've got 5, 40, and 20. Then for the gearbox, I would recommend 350 kilometers an hour. You don't necessarily have to do this, but I quite like this setup for the Le Mans circuit in particular. And if I recall correctly, I don't think I've actually touched these individual gears. It certainly doesn't look like I have. And then as far as the final drive, that is on 3.6. Now to give you some idea of how quick that is, 
because of course you've only got five gears to work with anyway most of the time this only uses four of those gears and you can comfortably get up around 180 miles an hour pretty easily even with 444 horses as far as the ballast we've got 88 kilos of course if you're using pounds instead of kilos you will need to convert that on google which is easy enough to do so 88 kilos then the ballast is two percent toward the rear and then for the restrictor that is full so again you only need to change that if you need specifically less power or lower points for an event the ecu is normal as well so that isn't restricted for the downforce those are set as low as possible because i will freely admit that to be honest most of the aero on this car is just to make it look good and to make it look authentic and then the rest of course is just the parts that we've already fitted so that's it for the tune now, of course, we'll come out into the main menu again and show you what the actual event is. So like I said, we've already gone through like the special project side of making it into a race car. We've gone through the tuning section of turning it into a, a circuit racer in general. Now we get to the money earning section. So come over to Europe and of course you will have to progress through the cafe missions to unlock this track. And that is of course the 24 Eau du Mans, which is Circuit de la Sarthe, aka Le Mans. And you want the 700 point world touring car event many of you already know about this 550 grand as you can see now this race takes half an hour which sounds like a lot of work for a relatively low amount of money especially compared to like circuit experiences however in this event which of course i'll skip over to now for you to be able to see that as far as this event goes the event does take half an hour, but you get a baseline of 550,000. Then if you get it clean, which does not mean you don't go off the track. The first time I did this, I got like 30 seconds worth of penalties from just cutting corners, and I still got the clean bonus. The only thing that matters is that you don't hit into the other cars. And my recommendation, especially in a car that's as effortlessly fast as this in a straight line, don't try to fight your way through the pack. You don't need to you will end up in the lead and even if you're not pushing the car as hard as it can go for example with my setup i'm running around like a 421 to 419 kind of lap so it's not ridiculously quick anyway because it's a mix of handling and speed rather than just speed so you'll end up winning the race by like a minute and a half easy what i like to do which i may or may not show in the video is at a certain point you'll cover up around like I think it's six or so laps in my experience within that half an hour period and the weather will be variable now the first couple of times that I did this I found that the weather was the same so I concluded it was probably the same every time but then the third time I did it it was totally different so clearly it is randomized to some degree so what I would recommend doing is setting your fuel efficiency in the lower right, you know, in the active controls like traction control, brake balance, all that kind of stuff. Set your fuel control all the way to the highest one, which makes the fuel as lean as possible, which means you've got less power, but you get way more fuel efficiency. That allows you to pit in at the end of lap three. You definitely want to pit in then though, because if you miss that, you will run out of fuel. So pit in at the end of lap three, then keep an eye on the weather. Because if the weather looks as if it's starting to change, if the window wipers are going on the car, if you're starting to notice, you know, a bit of mist coming off the rear tires when you look behind, then you'll definitely want to swap over to those heavy wet tires. That's why I said you would, you will need to buy both. This race, I believe, always involves rain, so you will need those tires. Unless, of course, you want to be driving hectic all the time on hards, which can be done. You know, I did that a couple of times, but it makes your life easier if you swap over to the heavy wets. Ultimately, you're looking at 825,000 in half an hour. I often find, pretty much every time I do it in fact, I end up being sometimes over two minutes ahead of the next car, which means that if I'm close to the finish line and there's like a minute and a half left, well instead of doing an entire another you know, four minute lap, I literally just park my car at the finish line, wait for the timer to go to zero, and then just cross the line. So I saved myself like another three minutes of just additional pointless driving to keep the race to an actual 30 minutes instead of like 33, 34. So in other words, if you do it twice an hour, you're looking at 1.65 million credits. And crucially, unlike the circuit experiences, you can do it over and over again and the money doesn't change. So this is a fantastic way of earning money and 
it happens to be on my favourite circuit. Now I'm going to do a few different tunes like this with different cars. I've built a car like this with the Maserati Gran Turismo, I've built one with the Camaro ZL1, I've built one with, uh, what was another car that I did, an Aston Martin, the DB11, so I will be dropping other ones of this type as well to give you guys some variation to choose from, and I'll probably do some others as well. So if you decide to use this tune, you don't just have to use it for this event, you can use it for any 700 point level, but in particular it's honed in for this track. I think it's a pleasure to drive and a lot of fun, and of course give the guy who made the livery and the build some fun as well, because he has no idea that I'm giving him the shout out, but I think it's a pretty cool little design that he did. So ultimately, check out the tune, of course use it if you want to, have a lot of fun, come back for more, you know the deal. So <laughs> until next time I'll see you then, but for now, as always, thanks for watching.